Hello and welcome to the uh, Greenfoot tutorial videos recording of a new section. Um, this has been recorded in April 2008. I'm using Greenfoot version 1.4.1 and what I'm going to show today is how to make use of mouse input for creating a scenario. Um, in Greenfoot version 1.4 mouse support was added to the functionality of Greenfoot and now I'm showing you what you can do with this. What I have here on my screen is um, a scenario that ha I have just started. I have just created a world. If we look into this, um, you see there's no um, sophisticated code in here yet, just the definition of the size of my world, and that is all. Um, and I have created no actor yet, so I'm at the very beginning, and I'm going to show you how you can react to mouse clicks and other mouse events to make a game or another scenario. So the first thing I'll do is I'm I'm going to create a new actor subclass um, and I've decided to start with a frog this time. Somewhere I, in the animal subclass I should have an image of a frog here. Oh, there's one. Okay, so I'm creating a frog class and as we know, if I compile this, I can now put a frog in here and if I run this, nothing happens. Um, let's look at the default skeleton of the frog. Here is my so far mostly empty source code for the frog and in my act method now I can start writing some code. The most important thing to know to deal with uh, mouse events in Greenfoot is where the new methods are. We can look, if you look into the help menu at the Greenfoot class documentation. Um, let me just resize my window here so that it fits on my screen. Um, in the class Greenfoot itself is where all the mouse methods are. So if you look through the methods in the Greenfoot class we see here is a mouse clicked, mouse dragged, mouse uh, mouse drag ended, mouse dragged, mouse moved and so on, mouse pressed. These are the methods um, to do with mouse events. So let's first look at the mouse clicked method where that allows me to check whether the mouse has been clicked. I'll just minimize this and keep it open because we might need that later. So there was a greenfoot mouse clicked method that returns a boolean. So I can write something like this if greenfoot dot mouse clicked. Um, the mouse clicked method has a parameter that specifies where I can specify the object um, that the click has to be in to be recognized. So if I say if mouse clicked this, that means if the mouse has been clicked on this object, so on, on the frog itself. Let's say um, I want to do something uh, when I'm clicking on the frog. Let's say I want to make it um, well, multiply. Let's put another frog into the world. So first, let's get a random location. Let's say I do. I want to get a random x location. So I do something like um, greenfoot dot get random number. Oops. Um, and then I need to have the width of the world as the bounds for my random number. So I do something like get world dot get width uh, that gives me the width so I get a random number somewhere between zero and the width of the world and I duplicate this and do that for y as well so y should be bounded by the height of the world so I've got a random x and y within my world coordinates and now I can write something like this um, get world dot object, so I'm adding a new object. Let's say I add a new frog in at my randomly selected x and y coordinates um, and I close my if statement. So I'm saying here in the, now if we read that again, I'm saying in the act method of the frog, if the mouse was clicked on the frog, then choose some random x and y coordinates and place a new frog at those coordinates. Let's see whether that works. If I compile this and I add a frog into the world and I run. Now if I click on the frog, 
several times every time I click I get a frog at a random location. I can of course click on those frogs as well. If I click here on the background of the world nothing happens. Um, so I can by just clicking here um, create many more frogs. Another thing we could do is um, we could maybe um, change this so that we don't um, add an object, but just that we just move the frog. So I do I just set location instead of adding an object. I'm doing the same thing. If I'm clicked, I choose a random X and Y, and I change my own location to that location. If we look at what it does now, I create a frog again. I click on it. Oops, I have to run the scenario first. I click on it. Every time I click on it, that frog jumps somewhere else. If I click on the background, nothing happens. Um, and that is because I've said I want to do this only if the mouse was clicked on this object. Um, this parameter here where I said this is a filter. I can say I want to only react to mouse clicks that um, happen on this object. I can also use this method without a filter by just specifying null as the parameter. That means I want to get notified of every mouse click independent of where it is. So if I use this variation and I place the frog back in again, now if I click on the frog it jumps around, but if I click somewhere on the background it also jumps around. Now it will react to any mouse click anywhere. And we could combine this, let's say I want functionality where if I click on the frog it jumps around, but if I click on the background um, then I get a new frog. So what I would do then is um, I would here as the filter um, for reacting to the mouse click that should produce a new frog pass in the world itself. So the, the best way to do that is probably to move that code into the world. So I copy this, I create my world and of course a world um, class can also have an act method. So I say here if if there's a click on this object that is the frog then I make the frog jump whereas if there's a click on this object that is now here we are in the world on the world object then I do an add object um, new frog. So I add an object. Um, and now because we are in the world this will not compile say here because I still have my get world in there but he, we are now in the world itself so we don't need to use the get world method call here. We just need to use just so say get width and get height because we are local in the world here. So if we compile this now um, now what we are saying is if we get a click on the world background, place a new frog. If we get a click on the frog, make it move. Um, let's try that out. Well, say we run this. I click now in the world and I get a new frog. I click in the world and that frog appears at a random location. If I click on the frog, now it moves around. If I click on the background, a new frog, click on the frog, it moves. Okay, that is very good. Let's say we want um, now also to know where the mouse click happened 